Tonight, a New Hampshire community is grieving the deaths of a little boy and his father, a murder-suicide. Police say the father sealed them in a room with carbon monoxide. Relatives tell WBZ police found a note in the living room warning officers about that deadly gas. And as Ken McLeod explains, it is the latest tragedy for a family that experienced the death of another child years ago. Investigators say Matthew Edmonds went out and bought two charcoal grills over the weekend, but had no intention of cooking on them. Instead, they were at the center of his plan to kill his young son and then take his own life here at the mobile home they shared. Tonight, neighbors stop by to pay respects at a modest memorial of flowers and teddies. You know, you would hear this in the news, then all of a sudden, you know, it happens in your neighborhood. Investigators returned to this mobile home today, roughly 24 hours after Matthew Edmonds' employer asked police to check on him. And the officers who entered the mobile home were greeted by a handwritten sign. Uh, the sign warned police officers that they would find, quote, will find me and my son, end quote, in the bedroom and to be aware of, quote, dangerous carbon monoxide levels. When those officers pushed into the bedroom, they found Matthew Edmonds and his six-year-old son poisoned by carbon monoxide fumes from a pair of charcoal grills dad had lit next to the bed. That room itself had been sealed from the inside using duct tape and also using a blanket. Investigators say Edmonds left documents detailing his plan for the murder-suicide, but they did not share any possible motive. A six-year-old dead? That's horrible. Several disbelieving neighbors described Edmund's difficult separation from the boy's mother and the child's recent surgery, but insisted they saw no signs it was coming to this. When an adult dies, it's rough, but when a child dies that's never had a chance, it's tragic. Why is maybe a question that we never get to the answer to. Matt Edmund's estranged wife says she's still trying to figure out how to bury their son. The couple shared another tragedy back in 2009 when their first son, Connor, accidentally drowned in a swimming pool. Ironically, he was also six years old. In Derry, New Hampshire, Ken McLeod, WBZ News.